one two source and no other than God. No? It is New Year, no? It is New Year. Uh, we are still in the month of January. And some of us may be thinking of uh, additional income, right? Uh, income. Uh, who are still studying? Is our sisters there? Are you still studying? Uh, are you tourists here in Bologna? Ah, studying. Ah, uh, university like. Ah, we have uh, 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 our sister Sandra. In this new year, no, many of us are thinking of addition. No? We, would, we are very fond of addition, right? We don't like sub subtraction. No? Mas gusto natin addition. No? So, additional jobs, additional part-times, additional source of income. No? There is an old, there is a mindset that the more the merrier, tama? No? The more the merrier. And if we have more, we are more secure, right? The more we have, the more secure we are, tama? No? But the reality, brothers and sisters, the one who source of all provision is God. Amen? Amen. The one who source of all provision is God alone. Let us pray, brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the gift of life. And thank you for the opportunity to worship you in this place. Forgive our sins and help us see that you alone is our true source of all the blessings in our lives. Teach us, guide us, be with us. This is our prayer in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we will talk about the provisions in the life of Prophet Elijah. No? Pamilya ba tayo kay Prophet Elijah? Tas na yan naman. Raise your hands if you know Prophet Elijah. Raise your hands. Prophet Elijah. He is also known as the Prophet of Fire. No? Naalala niyo yung mga kwento? Yung nagpaulan na uh, parang Uh, di lang ako ay mula sa langit, no? nagsindi yung alma. So, si Elijah yun, Prophet Elijah. So, this afternoon, mga kapatid, we will know about something. No? We will be more familiar with the Prophet Elijah. Sabi natin, no? we said that the one true source of all the blessing is God. But, The question, brothers and sisters, why does God allow us to be in the circumstances that it looks like He is not providing? No. Sabi yung pastor, sabi natin, God is our provider, pero bakit may mga pagkakataon sa ating mga buhay na para yata hindi talaga siya nagpo-provide? No. And... Mga kapatid, there are a number of reasons why God allows His people to be in the circumstances that provision is lacking. Uh, may mga pagkakataon na hinahayaan ng Diyos na tila parang nagpukulang, nagkakaroon ng problema. Bakit yata it seems like you're saying in contradiction na eh, in contradictory. Sabi mo, Pastor, hindi ka magpukulang. Di ba? Sinasabi ko lagi sa inyo, hindi kami magpukulang. Hindi tayo pababayaan. And that's the reality. No, if we have done all these uh, sabihin natin requirements. Pero mga kapatid, if we are lacking, something is wrong. No, lagi may tatandaan yan. No? Now that you are the Christian, if you are lacking, something is wrong. So, iyon yung i-discuss natin this afternoon. So, in first king, no, I encourage you, people of God, to open your Bibles, even the application in your cell phones, para for us to follow no, the story of Elijah. 
that we will gonna see this afternoon. In verse 17, no, our reference text is First King chapter 17. We will discuss all about chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17. Dito ikot yung aming story. So, chapter 17 says, Now, Elijah, a by from Tishbe, no? Ano lang to? Description lang na kung taga saan siya. There's nothing significant. No? In Gilead said to Ahit, to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Brothers and sisters, who is Ahab? No? Sino ba itong si Ahab? Last time, sino yung hari pinag-aralan natin? So, sino nakakaalala ng hari pinag-aralan yung nakaraan? Wala, wala nakaalala? Nakalimutan nyo na agad? Ha? Yo, King Herod. No, si King Herod. So now, we are starting uh, King Ahab. Patras tayo. Patras. Baka, uh, patras. Si King Ahab, he is the seventh king. No? King of Israel. During this time, the kingdom of Israel was divided into two parts, the northern and the southern. No? So, King Ahab was the seventh king of Israel. And King Ahab, uh, for your information, King Ahab was, we can say, one of the worst kings of Israel because he angered God. Nagalit ang Diyos sa kanya. Big why? Because instead of worshiping the Lord, the God of Israel, he worshiped Baal. No, sa Tagalog, Baal. No, in English, Baal. No, Baal worship. And in, in the Jewish tradition, no, hindi ka dapat, you cannot marry a foreigner. You must marry, uh, if you are a Jew, you must marry a Jew. But King Ahab married a foreigner. Uh, one of the commandments of God in the Old Testament that you shall not marry a foreigner because there, there will be a tendency that you will worship other gods. No? So, itong si King Ahab, he has a wife no, named Jezebel. And she is a big worshiper. No? You know worship niya si Baal. So, sino ba itong baal na ito, mga kapatid? This is a picture for you to understand who is Baal. No? Baal has a head of a bull. No? Parang, ano siya, with a human body. So, yan, yan. So, ancient time. Uh, panahon pa ng mga Egyptian. No? Uh, panahon pa ng nila Moises. Existing na itong Baal worship. No? And some of the theologians believe that it's originated in doon sa land of the promise, yung Kena, sa Kainan, doon nag-originate. Pero maraming forms. No, hindi lang yan ang form ng bay worship, marami pa. But the closest uh, picture of bay worship is that, no? uh, human, human body with the head of the moon. Okay. So gusto ko lang ipakita sa inyo yan, no? So mga kapatid, there was an issue here. The issue of idolatry. No? There's an issue of idolatry. In Deuteronomy 11 verses 16 to 17, Be careful or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. Then the Lord's anger will burn against you and He will shut up the heavens so that it will not rain and the ground will be healed. No produce. And you will be so, and you will soon perish from the God of the land the Lord is giving you. No. Mga kapatid, yung sinasabi dito, it will not rain. No, it will not rain because the the mostly the livelihood in that time is agricultural. Imagine the importance of rain, di ba? Kung walang, if there's no water, how can you plant? No? How can you harvest? So, the, the number one uh, thing to, to be reminded with this verse, no? God will flow 
forces the heaven so it will not rain. No, magkakaroon ng matisig tagtiyon. Kaya nga mga kapatid, ang sabi ni, ni Elijah dito kay King Ahab, there will be neither dew nor rain for the next years. Magkakaroon ng matinding tagtiyon. There will be a great drought. So, mga kapatid, what is idol? No. Sabi mo idol, Lodi. No, Lodi. No. Marami tayong mga idol. May American idol, Tanya's idol, Philippine idol. No, lahat. No? Pero what is its idol? No. According to uh, a famous pastor, yan, ito yung dinify niya. No? No? So, you can also look the meaning of idol in the dictionary. But this is uh, more close to our uh, topic. Ito yung sabi niya. Idol is any now person, place, thing, or thought that you go to and appeal to as your source and God. No. Sino daw, sino man, no, ano man yan, tao, lugar, bagay, pag-iisip. Sipin nyo ah, kahit pag-iisip to. That you go to, na pinupuntahan mo, na umaagaw ng iyong oras, no? na mayroong uh, matindikang attachment, no? na pinupuntahan that you consider a source, no? is an idol. No? Parang ginudyos mo. Yan daw ang definition from Tony Evans. So, brothers and sisters, the reason why Israel had, has drought is because they abandoned God for idol worship. No, they worship Baal. Kaya nagalit. So mga kapatid, why God's provision is lacking? Why God's provision is lacking? God is being abandoned. Because of idolatry, because of the sins, no? God has been abandoned. Provision is absent because we move away from the provider. Tatandaan niyo lang yung mga kapatid, God is always there. We are the ones who are moving far from God. Nothing in our lives. Maybe we are abandoning God, or we are the ones who are moving away from God. We are left with our own resources to provide for ourselves. Only God is the source. Out of God is a resource. No. Sipin nyo to. Sabi, the Philippines is very, the Philippines is very rich of ano, natural resource. Di ba? Resources. Nung inaan ko to, sabi ko, oo oh, nga ano, hindi nila sinabi natural source. Di ba? Bakit may re? May resource. Re. The word R, the letter R and E. Mayroong resource. Because there is only one source in God. Apart from God, other source means resource. Di ba? Yung mga, yung mga minerals natin, the forest, the, the, the precious uh, metals, di ba? Who created that? God created that. He is the source, the creator. So, now, that we are, sabihin natin, we are getting that source. It is now a resource. Naintindihan nyo? No? So, because there is only one source, and that is God. In Psalms 104, verses 10 to 17, no? It tells us that God is the source. If we treat our resource, a source, no? Yung resource, no resource, a source, we now make our resource an idol. I think that, you, know, you understand? There is only one source, and if you treat your resource as a source, you're making your resource an idol. How? For example, jobs, career, education. These are the things 
that we are proud of. Tama? No? Oh, I, I, I have a good career. I have a good job. I earn much. No? Uh, I finish in a well-known university. No? Education. This is the things that uh, make us proud. This is the things that make us secure. Tama? No? So, this is our resource. But if we depend on this, everything is okay because I earn much. My career is uh, better than ever. No? So, ito yung pinangahawakan natin. It makes, uh, we have a mindset that we are being secured by these things. And the problem is, brothers and sisters, this resource becomes our idol. Because we have a thinking that we don't need God anymore. Tama? Eh, matatag yung trabaho mo. Magaling ako, matalino ako. No? Maayos ang lahat. Hindi ko kailangan ng Diyos. I don't need God. I have all the, everything I need. So, we are making our resource an idol. Until we establish the principle that God is our source, we will be always controlled by the presence and absence of our resource. No? Hanggat hindi natin naiintindihan ang prinsipyo no? that God is the only source, tatanong tayo ng tanong. Tatanong, tatanong, tatanong. Pag iniisip natin that we, will only, we, we are only depending on our jobs, no? Taon-taon yan, bago ng bago ng trabaho, hanap ka ng hanap, walang katahimikan, walang katakusan. No? Dahil ang iniisip natin, dun yun, yun yung source natin. Eh. But if God is our source, mga kapatid, stay po lang lahat. We have peace of mind and peace in our hearts. So this year, brothers and sisters, don't ever or even think that you can make this year without God. Amen? Amen. No? Hindi pa si Han na, na healthy ka, hindi pa si Han na magandang trabaho mo, marami kang ipon. No? Kapag may nangyari sa'yo, no? only God knows. No? Only God, only in God, we have this security. Tandaan niya. So God allow luck. No. God will allow luck to let you know that you are not self-sufficient. In another reason why God's provision is lacking. He is testing us. No. We already discussed last year that as a Christians, we have this called discipline, the discipline of God. And now, even though you are a Christian, a follower of Christ, you are not accepted in God's testing. No. Sometimes God allows lacking of His provision because we are being tested, brothers and sisters. In Deuteronomy 8 verses 1 to 3, no, basahin ko, Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you away from the wilderness these 40 years. Ito yung istorya no? ng Israelites traveling in the wilderness for 40 years. Sabi dito, to humble and test you. So, why the Israelites took 40 days to travel instead of 11 days? No? Mga kapatid, 40 years yung travel nila. Samantalang, if we, if there is no, in 
intervention of there is no testing, it will only took 11 days of travel. Yung 11 days naging 40 years. Why? Because God is teaching them. God is testing them, brothers and sisters. Sabi, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So, the significance of manna is the uh, dependence of the people of Israelite in God, feeding them every day with the manna. So, ganun din tayo mga kapatid. We must be fully dependent in God. Brothers and sisters, whether it is financial, emotional, or physical tanging, no. Kasi iba-iba tayo ng degree. There are different uh, degrees of testing in our lives. We are individuals, no. No one is the same. And even our testing is not all the same. Maybe we are the test in, our, in the financial aspect, emotional aspect, physical aspect, no. But the reason why we are tested by God is that He allows to strike a dead blow on our independence. A dead blow on our independence. Bakit? Kasi na mga kapatid, kapag okay ang lahat, if everything seems okay, no? walang problema. Dalawa lang yan eh. There are always uh, two reasons. Thank you. You're always welcome in our church. Thank you. Bye. God bless you. So mga kapatid, the reason why we are experiencing testing is to strike a dead blow on our independence. No? Tulad na sinabi ko, when everything is okay, walang problema, there is always a two response. Meron ng dalawang response ang tao mga kapatid eh. No? When everything is okay, it's either you will be more thankful, you will be more grateful to God, or you will forget God because you, need, you don't need God. Nagets nyo? No? Kapag okay ang lahat, dalawa lang ang reaction mo dyan. Gano'n mo ang magpapasalamat sa Diyos o kaya makakalimutan mo siya kasi hindi mo siya kailangan. Okay lahat eh. Pero mga kapatid, ang gusto ng Diyos, sometimes she allow testing for us to humble ourselves and He hates when we feel that we can do things without Him. No. Ito tatandaan nyo, isa sa mga pinagagalit ng Diyos, ayaw ng Diyos na isipin natin na kaya natin nang wala siya. Isa yan sa mga pinagagalit ng Diyos. So God will allow that to let you know that you are not self-sufficient. 2 Corinthians 1 verses 8 to 9. We do not want to be uninformed brothers and sisters. This is talking about the ministry of Paul. About the troubles we experience in the province of Asia, we were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we are uh, despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. Tamo, it's a matter of life and death na. But this happened that we might not rely on self, on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. No? Si Apostol Pablo na nagsasabi dito, mga kapatid. Nalo na sila sa harap ng panganib, no? nang mamamatay sila, papatayin sila. Pero ang sabi ni Apostol Pablo, no? that we might not rely on ourselves. It's for us to trust Him, to deepen our faith in God. And that's the reason for this testing, mga kapatid. Para tayo lalong magtiwala, para lumani ang ating pananampalataya. Mga kapatid, imagine this. If we don't know that God allows this testing in our lives, no? kailangan kasi we have the right uh, knowing the right 
perspective about God. Bakit? If we don't know that God allows testing in our lives for our own good, the tendency is that we will be frustrated and be mad of God because of our circumstances. Ang tindihan nyo? Kung hindi mo kinata ang Diyos, no? kung hindi mo alam na hindi na pinapayagan niya ang mga pagsubok sa buhay mo, ang magiging tendency mo sa Diyos, magagalit ka. Maiinis ka sa mga sitwasyon mo. Pero hindi natin alam ang katotohanan pinapayagan ng Diyos ang mga pagsubok para sa sarili natin kabutihan. So mga kapatid, napakayaman itong chapter na ito about the life of the prophet Elijah. In verses 2, no? verses 2 to 6, dun sa mga Bibles nyo, makikita nyo yung title that Elijah fed by ravens. No? Elijah fed by ravens. Ano ba itong raven? No? Sino ba yung dancer na raven yun, di ba? Sure. Ah, Raven ba? Raven ba? Sorry. <laughs> Raven pa na yun. Kala ko Raven. No, Raven. No. Ano sa Tagalog ng Raven? Ha? What is the uh, Tagalog Raven? It is a kind of bird. Ha? Uwa. Tama. Sa kanya natin ang galing Tagalog. Uwa. Uwa. No. Sabi dito, Elijah fed by ravens. Sa verse 2, sabi niya. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Live here, turn eastward, and hide in Keret Rabine, east of Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. Imagine ha, yung ravens ang magpapakain sa kanya. So he did the Lord had told him, he went to Keret Rabine, east of the Jordan is later. The ravens brought him bread. Imagine ang bread. No? Galing ano? Bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening and he drank from the brook. No? Mga kapatid, napaka-imposible, no? Napaka-imposible na ang isang ibon ay magpapakain sa isang tao. Imagine niyo yung meat na yun, anong klaseng meat yun? Baka bukod-bukod lang yun yung papakain sa kanya, di ba? Tapos bis-bis lang ng mga breadcrumbs, no? Kasi paano papakain yun? Pero mga kapatid, I want you to, to recall, no? In the time of Noah, no? Alam niyo ba, did you know that the first bird that sent by Noah is a raven? No? Pangalawa na yung dub, eh. Pigeon, second time na yun, eh. But the first uh, bird is the raven. Tapos, the raven did not turn back. Hindi siya bumalik. Bakit? Because this raven, mga kapatid, they ate the dead bodies. No. Kaya nga, alam niyo ba, this uh, raven is considered uh, unclean. No? Kung titignan niyo yung Every morning, asking for bread or bread. 
breakfast. Old lady. Every morning she prayed the same prayer. Every morning the same prayer. And one day, uh, this atheist neighbor, no, atheist, no, hindi, atheist, no, hindi na niniwala sa Diyos, neighbor, heard this prayer. No, maybe this neighbor uh, was sick and tired but hearing the same old prayer because the old lady every morning prayed, Lord, give me bread, give me bread, give me bread. Every morning. Then, one day, this neighbor go up to the chimney. Ay, yung chimney. No, yung dumada sa Santa Claus. Sa chimney. Uh, chimney. Drop a bag of bread in the chimney. And when the lady saw this bag of bread, she jumped in joy. Sabi niya, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. No? Then, intentionally, no, this neighbor, when he heard that the, the old lady is jumping in joy, he knocked. No, he knocked. And the, the lady opened the door. Sabi niya, uh, he said, That was not God. I am the one who dropped the bread. And he told the lady, I told you, God is not real. God is not real. I am the one who dropped the bread. God is not real. And do you know what is the response of the old lady? The lady closed her eyes and prayed aloud saying, Oh God, thank you for using the devil to give me bread. <laughs> Ayan, tinatawa kayo. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, even the devil can be used by God to provide for his people. Some time later, tuloy tayo, in verse 10 to 17, 10, 10 to 7 to 10, sorry. Sometime later, the brook dried. No, natiyo na yung brook. Dahil wala nang ulan. Then the word of the Lord came, Go at once to Senepta. No? Sa Senepta. In the region of Sidon and stay there. So, wala na yung resource niya. Hindi na siya binibigyan ng raven. No? Tiyo na yung, yung body of water doon. So, pumunta ngayon siya. Sabi niya, I have directed the widow, there to supply with you food. With you food. So he went to Sare, Sare, Saripat. Sorry, Saripat. So he went to So my brothers, the point here is that Elijah obeyed. No, sumunod. Pagkatapos, no, pagkatapos na siya ipakaini ni tong Raven, no, bigyan siya ng tinapay ng meat. Naubos ang tubig doon, sumunod si Elijah. So, another the reason why God's provision is lacking is what? The opposite of obedience. Disobedience. Maybe God's provision is lacking because of our disobedience. Yung hindi natin pagsunod, minsan baka kaya tayo kinakabos sa ating mga buhay, mga kapatid, hindi tayo sumusunod sa Diyos. So sabi nun niya sa Deuteronomy 31, mga ba ay 14 to 23, the, the thought of these verses, sabi, is Israel's disobedience to God. No? And the prediction that Israel will disobey God, they will worship other gods, forget their covenant to God, and God will hide their face to them. Pag sinabi mo yung, yung mode of uh, explanation dito, hide their face, ibig sabihin nun, pag ang Diyos, itinago na yung mukha niya to the people of Israel, yung parang yung sinabi na itatago ko ang aking mukha sa inyo na hindi na kayo pagpapalain. So, ganun ang gustong sabihin ng Diyos dito. Hide his face. Diba? Pag meron kayong ayaw hape, diba ang ginagawa nyo? Nagtatago kayo? Ewan ko lang, pag may nanginig eh. No, hindi naman, no. So, ganun mga kapatid. God said that He will hide His face to His people. 
because of their disobedience. Okay. So, nato na tayo. Pumunta na si Elijah dun sa Serapat. When he came to the town gate, nato na tayo, no? dun sa Elijah and the widow at the Serapat, nato na tayo. When, when he came to the town gate, a widow, no? Ano yung widow? What's the widow? In, in, in ancient times, in the time of Jesus Christ, widow was the poorest of the poorest. No? And ang pinakamahirap na uri ng tao, no? bukod doon sa may mga sakit. No? Ito yung mga normal na mahirap. Kasi once you are a widow, hindi ka na makakapagtrabaho. No? Kasi only uh, husband are allowed to work. No? Pag namatay yung asawa mo at hindi ka na nakapagkasama ulit, hindi ka na pwede magtrabaho. So, yun yung tradisyon nun. So, once you are a widow, you are considered the poorest of the poorest. No, tanda niya. That was gathering stick. Namumulot daw na stick, no? He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in the jar so I, so I may have a drink? No. As she was going to get it, no, hindi pa, hindi pa, Umabot pa si Elijah. Sabi niya, bring me some bread. Imagine that, that brothers and sisters. No? Yung lang pagsunod ni Elijah, nung sinabi ng Diyos na pumunta ka doon to meet this widow, imagine this brothers and sisters. How, no, if, if I am Elijah, I would think like this. How can a widow help me? No? He is poorer than me. No? Imagine niyo yung scenario. Mga kapatid, pinapakita lang dito ng Diyos na He can use every one. No? Yung hayo, yung tao, kahit ano pang kalagay niya, pag gusto pang gamitin ng Diyos, gagamitin ka ng Diyos. No? Kaya mga kapatid, sabi nyo, ano, ang reply naman dito ng babae, as surely as the Lord, your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Wala ako, no, sa, 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 sa reality, sa sabi nyo nun. No. I'm sorry. No, wala, wala, sabi niya. No, kung Pilipinas yung buwan, sasabihin, wala nga akong makain, bibigyan pa kita ng tinapay. No. Pero mga kapatid, sinabi nung babae, sabi niya, saksi ko ang lahi, wala talaga akong magbibigyan sa'yo. Sabi niya. So, sabi niya, I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son. Then we may eat and die. No, matalang tayo pa rin ang eat all yung pinatin. Ito, huling tinapay na lang, bibigay pa, tapos kakainin daw, tapos itay na lang mamatay. No, mga kapatid, ganun tayo yung kaportunate. No? Pero ito, no, huling tinapay na lang, hiningi pa ni Elijah. No? Pero ang sabi ni Elijah, don't be afraid. No? Don't be afraid. Mga kapatid, in our life, it is very hard to, to obey God in times of difficulties. Totoo? Right? No? Imagine this. No? Kung ikaw, if you were in the position of that mother, someone asked you, Give me your last piece of bread. Knowing that last piece of bread will be your ultimate need. No, last meal na. Tapos, you, you will just wait for your time to die. Diba? Napakahirap. Will you give that bread? Pero mga kapatid, ang sabi ng verse, I have directed a widow to give you food. Sabi ng Diyos, mayroon na mong inutusan. Pero mga kapatid, napakahirap. No? So, brothers and sisters, ang sabi ni Elijah, don't be afraid. Huwag kang matakot. The application of these brothers and sisters in our life, in our daily lives, and even in our Christian lives, we need someone to encourage us. Someone who has been uh, as Someone who surpassed all those trials in life. Na sabi natin, they are people who are more spiritual. 
than us, to encourage us, to help us in times of needs. Mga kapatid, kailangan natin ng mga tao na mag-guide sa atin, mag-encourage sa atin sa panahon na, na tayo ay may mga pagsubo. No? Kung hindi pa sinabi ni Elijah na don't be afraid, sa tingin nyo, ibibigay ng babae ang tinapay. So ang sabi, go home and do as you have said, but first a small loaf of bread for me. Sabi niya, but first make a, a small loaf of bread for me from what you have bring, from what you have and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. Diba dito pa lang, meron ng pangitain ng miracle, di ba? Go, gawa mo mo na ako ng tinapay, make something for me, tapos, and afterwards, you have all the bread you can eat. Diba? So, mga kapatid, sabi dun sa verse 17, eh, sa verse 14, for this is what the Lord God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up, and the jar of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain in the land. So, sarap nito, kumuha nito, no? Will you want it? Kung walang buha pera, hindi na upos. Eh, kung in-expression dito yung jar, no? Di ba sa yung mga tayo ng araw, jar, karina? Kung walang buha ng jar, hindi na upos. Yung langis, buhos ng buhos, hindi na upos. No, sino yung mga nakakapanood ng superbook ng araw? Pumilyan pa kayo sa superbook? Yung mga superbook eh, doon eh. Yun yung in-expression. Nag-pray si Elijah, yung overflow, no? Umabaw yung lalagay ng langis, umabaw yung lalagay ng arena. Mga kapatid, ganun ang nangyari. So, mga kapatid, she went away and did as Elijah had told her. Nag-import siya. Ginawa niya yung party niya. And that's the poor thing, brothers and sisters. Why God's provision is lacking if we don't do our part? No? In Proverbs 11, 25, a generous person will, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. No? Kaya nga, di ba mayroong kasabihan, it's better to, ano? Better to give. Alam niyo kung bakit? When you give, your container has more space to receive. Tindihan nyo? Kapag nagbigay ka, mas marami kang kakayahan para tumanggap pa. At ganun mga kapatid ang ginagawa ng Diyos. You are being blessed for you to become a blessing. No. Kaya pansin nyo, yung mga taong mababait, mga generous, yung mga taong na ma ma mapagbigay. Diba? Nakikita nyo, sila yung mga taong na nang pinagpapala. So mga kapatid, that is the, the principle. Doon sa it's better to give than to receive. Because your container, you will be able to accept more, more blessing if you will give more. In Deuteronomy 24.19, be a blessing to others so that God will bless you also. Luke 6.38 Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over, will pour into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be a measure to you. It will be measured to you. Kung ano daw yung panupat na ginamit mo, yun din, yung panupat na gagamitin sa'yo. A lot of people love this verse, mga kapatid. And we use it in our living. But, this verse, even though a lot of people love this verse, they don't do anything about it. Wala silang ginagawa. In our life, brothers and sisters, God will regularly require a response of faith in every area which is your own needs. No. Ulitin natin. God will regularly require a response of faith in the every area
idea which is your own needs. Lagi kong sinasabi sa inyo mga kapatid, kung ano ang kahinahan mo, kung ano ang kahinahan mo, doon ka susubukin ng Diyos. In, in the story, no? nagugutom si Elijah, nagugutom, no? they were both, both hungry, they were both uh, in need of food, pero mga kapatid, through their faith, the obedience, no? ibinigay ang babae nito. Kaya nga mga kapatid, lahat ng aspeto, in all the aspect of life, tandaan nyo to, there is a saying that, ano, it takes two to tango. It takes two to tango. Pag nagsayaw ka ng mag-isa ng tango, eh, hindi tango yun. No. De, kiti nga sa akin, in every aspect of life, God needs your participation. No? Even in our salvation, mga kapatid, there's a part of God, there's a grace of God, but you must accept Him as your Lord and Savior. You must do your part. No? Sa pagtatrabaho, gusto mo mong masenso, no? di mo pwede kang wantamad na. Di ba yung, ano yung illustration ni wantamad, hinihintay yung bayabas ko yun na mahulo. Di ba? Kailangan mong pitasin. No? Magsasaka ka, kailangan mong magtanin. Parang mani. In every aspect of life, brothers and sisters, we must do our part. No? We want provision from God. Do our part. Do your part. Ika nga nila sa Tagalog, we have a saying, ano, nasa Diyos ang awa, nasa tao ang gawa. No? At pray to God, give to God things that you cannot do yourself. Kapag ginawa mo na yung parte mo, kaya nga nasa, nasa Diyos ang awa eh, nasa tao ang gawa. Ginawa mo ng lahat. Pag ginawa mo ng lahat, paubaya mo na sa Diyos yung mga hindi mo kaya. Amen? Amen. At yun ang gusto ng Diyos sa buhay mo, mga kapatid. Yun ang gusto ng Diyos sa atin. Ibigay sa Kanya ang mga bagay na hindi natin kayang gawin. Brothers and sisters, this new year, I want us to experience a higher provision of God in our lives. And that's the will of God to prosper us, to give us hope in the future. If sometimes provision is lacking, mga kapatid, maybe we are abandoning God, we are being tested by God, or maybe we are disobeying the will of God, His words in our lives, or we are lacking because we are not doing anything. Remember that God is our provider. He is our Jehovah Jireh. Nangakarinig kayo ng Jireh, Jehovah Jireh. That means God, our provider. God is the one true source. Apart from God, we are nothing. Apart from God, we are nothing. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.